interesting conversation today. I've got Jeff Dre, who's the CEO of Groltex, and he's in California, and I'm in Yorkshire in England. Uh, good morning, Jeff. How are you? Well, so we've made the copper, we've made the graphene, you've transferred it, you've talked about some of the applications. So what markets are you uh, focusing on and what sort of applications within those markets are you seeing the, the market pull taking you towards? Well, we've been in business for about five years and we decided to uh, start the business by selling to uh, all comers, uh, researchers all over the world, in university labs, and government labs. Uh, so essentially we were in the research materials business and mm -hmm. Part of what we uh, have been doing over the uh, past several years is, uh, of course, observing what people are doing with these uh, materials. Uh, and it turns out uh, about half of everything we've sold has gone to all the uh, incredible applications that really smart people would be working on. So advanced solar cells, um, acoustics we talked a little bit about earlier. Uh, people are using it for proton exchange membranes for uh, hydrogen fuel cells, which is that's a whole nother meaning in itself, a very exciting field. Uh, but the point is that about half of everything that we sold went to a myriad of very advanced, very interesting applications. Uh, but the other half went to one application, uh, and that was biosensing. And uh, that biosensing, uh, that need for our material for biosensing really escalated uh, during the COVID uh, outbreak because people started... Uh, uh, people uh, that focus on using advanced materials for the purpose of biosensing, many of them set aside the projects they were working on when COVID came along. They set aside cancer research. They set aside uh, many other things they were doing and said, we're going to see if graphene can be used for an advanced uh, virus sensor. And so many of them put their focus on that, that amped up the need for our material. And uh, so hence the focus with uh, graphene biosensors and specifically now for for virus. So when you say sensors and detecting COVID, basically you mean field effect sensors? Um, yeah, I, it, it, there's actually a few ways that a, that a layer of graphene can be used uh, to detect, but a principal one is a field effect sensor, that's right. My understanding of it is that you um, you functionalize the surface, so you, you put little receptors onto the surface of the graphene that uh, will lock onto a particular target, and you set up um, a circuit so that there's electricity going through the, the graphene, and then you, you adjust the delicate balance of voltages, so you just stop the current flowing. So when a, a target molecule lands on the surface, then that changes the electrical conductivity, and therefore you know that you've you're detecting something very specific is that roughly what's going on yeah that's right so if you imagine you know we talked about uh, one of the reasons that uh, our material has uh, the value that it has is that it's very very conductive so if you imagine at the atomic level this layer of carbon atoms that looks like this chicken wire if you uh, run some current through there uh, and then uh, in in the specific case of virus uh, what we do is uh, as as you described uh, we anchor some uh, DNA uh, probes. These are generic probes, but they're specific to a specific virus, in this case, mm -hmm. COVID. So, so we take these, uh, these uh, DNA probes, anchor them to the surface of the uh, graphene, and we send some current through and take a reading. Then if in a sample, in uh, the case we're working on right now, happens to be saliva, but in, in a saliva sample, if you've got viral RNA or DNA, that DNA senses the probe on the surface of the graphene sensor, that DNA hybridizes with the probe, and then the current flowing across the surface of the graphene, that changes, it changes the resistivity of the graphene. So it's a very kind of a basic reading. The electrical signal changes in the presence of viral RNA in that environment. So, uh, so that's what's going on there. And I suppose that is more or less instantaneous, so you get real-time results. It, it, it is near instantaneous. In fact, uh, the, the first time we did it uh, without any optimization or any other um, uh, sort of tweaking or whatever, the very first time we did it, uh, we saw 73% of the signal within the first 16 seconds. So it's, wow. it is a near instantaneous reading. And also your material was behind one of the most sensitive COVID sensors ever, wasn't it? Was it um, do you supply some material for a lab uh, somewhere overseas, was it, that detected COVID down to unimaginable levels? 
Yeah, so, um, so as I mentioned, uh, when COVID really started becoming the, the pandemic that we all know that it is, and when labs uh, all over the world started refocusing on using graphene to detect uh, COVID in this case, uh, one of the first labs that did uh, some of the best work was uh, published out of a paper out of uh, Korea, or the, Korea, the Advanced Korean uh, Institutes. Uh, and they were nice enough to acknowledge that they used our material to do that. But there were, there were many other papers done as well. That was one of the better known papers because uh, it, was, it was very well researched. Yeah, and you, you got detection limits down to one femtogram per milliliter, which is just <laughs> a few molecules, basically, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, graphene is, uh, people ask why. Why are we talking about this? Why is there this film? What is it about this film of carbon? Why is it such a good uh, biosensor? Um, the, the very simple basic reasons uh, are, number one, uh, that it is one atom thick, meaning it has a, an unsurpassed surface to volume ratio. Uh, mm -hmm. What that means is that if it is one atom thick, every atom in the sensing environment is a sensor. All of it is sensing all the time. Uh, number two, since it is the most conductive substance known at room temperature, any signal that takes place on that film is immediately transmitted. So um, that combined with uh, the fact that graphene is uh, very um, biocompatible, biology loves to sit on graphene. Uh, another very important factor is that um, graphene is transparent. So while you've collected these electronic signals, so far I've only talked about electronic types of signals, um, while you're doing that, you can also be uh, getting optical signals because there's all kinds of plasmonic advantages to yeah. using graphene as well. Yeah. So being able to do both of these types of sensing, electronic and optical at the same time, opens up a world of advanced sensing that we, uh, you know, we just, that takes you into decades worth of sensing advancements, combining those two, so. So basically what you've done in the sensors market, your material is essentially a multifunctional platform. So you're providing a very stable, very, um, uh, friendly uh, environment for a production environment to, to get a consistent material that you can customize with almost infinitely really to detect anything you like. It, it is and that's uh, that's a really good sign for us you know it it, mm -hmm. it it would be enough of a blessing if our material were um, uh, seen as the ultimate say in this case virus sensing material which arguably it is but but what I mean by that is we have customers that use our material to detect uh, glucose in sweat uh, as a wearable, right? So there it is for diabetes. We have customers that use our material to make the CRISPR chip, CRISPR chip for genomics and gene editing. We have customers that use our material to observe protein binding interactions for advanced drug discovery. So there are many areas of biosensing where our material is seen as today as the optimal kind of uh, uh, sensing capability. So the biosensors market is going to keep you busy for quite a long time. Um, you're, you're obviously focused on that market quite a lot. Are there any other markets you're looking at? Uh, you know, there are some markets that are starting to kind of uh, peak up on the horizon. Uh, one of those is uh, advanced acoustics, as you and I have talked about before. Uh, there are some companies uh, that are actually kind of publicly talking about using graphene as their key uh, element in their advanced acoustic devices. Um, so that's easy enough to see gra graphene uh, sensing in acoustics, or excuse me, graphene and, and acoustics area. If you Google that search term, those uh, those companies will come up. So yeah, so that's also about, a very promising yeah. area. Yeah, we're talking about using graphene inside loudspeakers and microphones, presumably. Yeah, exactly. Microphones, headphones, um, uh, areas where uh, you know, a, a membrane for transmitting sound uh, is made up of something else today where graphene can really lend some advanced performance to that, uh, to that application. And graphene is very, very strong and very lightweight and very flexible as well. So it can probably pick up and emit uh, a, quite a range of frequencies, I would imagine, very effectively. Yeah, that's, uh, as you and I have talked that this isn't my field, but as I understand the, uh, the, the folks who are in this business, um, they're, they're, start, they're getting results that they didn't think was, was possible in their field. So now they're scrambling for ways to, uh, to, to use our type of material and functionalize it in devices, uh, uh, advanced devices for their use. That's quite cool because that 
what you're talking about there then is the beginnings of a market pull to start to say give us more of your product basically from the market and up till now we've sort of had a technology push from the manufacturers pushing out so you you I get the impression you are coming at that tipping point where you're moving from sort of the technology push trying to educate the market to people getting what your product can do and starting to demand more from it. Yeah, I think you described that well. We are starting to see that uh, we, we think it is starting to be a tipping point for, for biosensing. Uh, you know, um, of course, no one's happy about uh, COVID and, you know, what it's led to all of us. But uh, one thing it did was shine a light on uh, how, how can we use what we humans use what we have as uh, to address advanced needs, and in, in that case, biosensing, of course. But uh, it has also woken up some uh, other use cases as well. So yeah, I think you're right. I think we are getting to uh, the, the an inflection point or a tipping point. So what we've covered then, we've gone from me showing, uh, just connecting everybody to uh, the sample here that you remember that I've used in lots of talks. So you've mastered the art of manufacturing graphene, and then you've mastered the art of transferring it into various devices and targeting uh, specific markets, markets. I get the impression you're not falling into the trap of trying to solve every problem in every market out there. Biosensors, acoustics seem like a good place to start. And you begin to get traction in both of those markets. So you're going all the way through from manufacturing connected through to solving customers' problems. That sounds to me a pretty good recipe for success, Jeff. I wish you well in the future. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, we, we try to stay focused. There's, there's as, as you and I have talked, there's many things we would like to do, uh, but we're, we're really keeping our nose to the grindstone on the specific areas where we know there's value because, you know, people are other, we have customers in these areas, right? So let, yeah. let's stay with those areas. Let's advance the, uh, the ball where we can. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me, Adrian. It's a pleasure talking to you as always.